my colleagues at Hemanetics. I would like to thank Perfusion.com and the conference organizers and the attendees uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to support you guys. Beyond the value provided by the tech technology itself, an area that our customers appreciate most is our commitment to clinical education. The next speaker is one of the team of about 40 clinical specialists responsible for supporting the educational needs of customers at the local level. Carla Neeb is a registered nurse and TEG clinical specialist in Southwest Florida for hemanetics. Prior to joining industry in 2017, she was an ER and OR nurse in Sarasota, Florida. Carla is also a proud veteran of the U.S. Army where she served deployments in both Iraq and Afghanistan and leaving as a rank of captain. Today she will be reviewing the medical guideline support for the use of viscoelastic hemostasis testing in and beyond the cardiac OR. Please welcome Ms. Carla Nieb. Thank you for the introduction, Pat. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to my presentation. My name is Carla. Today I'll be talking to you about the guidelines that are in support of tech testing in and beyond the CVOR. So we know that traditional monitoring comes with challenges. The image that you see here is the life of a clot that's been overlaid with conventional coags. And as you see, it takes a series of tests that provide isolated data that you then have to combine in order to get a hemostatic profile for your patient. In other words, these tests really provide a very limited view of hemostasis, and they also don't adequately explain hemostasis as it occurs in vivo. Most importantly, there are no randomized controlled trials supporting the use in perioperative coagulopathy. And then, of course, you have to contend with the significant time delays in regard to results. TEG being a whole blood assay provides a global view of hemostasis using the cell-based model of coagulation. This model, which builds on the traditional coagulation model, includes the addition of cellular components, um, excuse me, and reflects Raman generation as occurring on the surfaces of tissue factor bearing cells and platelets. So the, so this, so the traditional model still plays a role um, in hemostasis, but the interactions are dependent on excuse me, the pathways are dependent on interactions at the cellular surface rather than in plasma, as you would see with your conventional coags. Therefore, routine coags do not represent the cell-based model of hemostasis. For those of you who are not familiar with TEG, TEG is a whole blood assay that actually gives you uh, parameters that give you a comprehensive view of your patient's hemostasis. These functional parameters assess clot rate, strength, and stability over time. If we read this tracing from left to right, the first parameter is R time. R time reflects clot initiation and is measured in minutes. The next parameter is MA, so as the clot begins to grow, we evaluate MA, and this is reflective of the max clot strength and is measured in millimeters. And then the last parameter that we're looking at is LY30. This reflects clot stability or clot breakdown and is measured as a percentage. All of these functional parameters are displayed both graphically and numerically. So TEG helps to identify where your patient exists on the coagulation continuum. We know that many factors, both internal and external, can cause a shift towards bleeding or thrombosis, and we know that if left unaddressed, they can cause a lot of the complications that we see on this slide, also including extended length of stay, increased utilization of resources, and elevated costs. Uh, we know that this is particularly important in our mechanical circulatory support patients where that balance really has to be maintained. The key objectives of TEG are to conserve blood product use, stratify risk for thrombosis or bleeding, and improve patient outcomes. Currently, we're in the worst critical blood shortage in the last 10 years, and a lot of experts believe that it's really not going to improve and that it's going to become the new normal. So we know, based on the evidence that I'll be covering shortly, that tech can help reduce blood product usage. Tech is very well studied. There are over 5,000 peer-reviewed clinical studies, with almost 1,300 of those studies in the last five years. And we also remain the market leader with 600 tech analyzers in North America, with over 75% of those in the top 20 hospitals. 
and over 1,800 analyzers in Europe. So there are a number of um, there are a number of societies who endorse the use of TEG in both perioperative surgery, excuse me, perioperative and CV surgery disciplines. The SCA states that viscoelastic testing is superior to conventional coax in patients undergoing CV surgery. They also say that algorithms based on TEG can reduce transfusion-associated adverse events. And they also say that we should consider platelet function testing on patients undergoing CV surgery who are on P2Y12 inhibitors. The ASA recommends the use of TAG if, if coagulopathy is suspected. SABM endorses viscoelastic testing in the setting of trauma, um, organ transplant, OB hemorrhage, and cardiovascular surgery. All of the societies there in the corner, to include the European societies, all agree that goal-directed transfusion algorithms using viscoelastic testing reduce both bleeding and transfusion in cardiac patients. So here we have several organizations that are trauma organizations, and you're probably wondering why I'm talking about this, but you may have trauma colleagues bring you in to manage a patient like a crush injury or any type of surgical critical care patient. Um, so I want you to understand too that tra um, that, tra that TEG is heavily studied in trauma as well. The ACS Orange Book states that thromboelastography should be available at all level one and level two trauma centers. E states that viscoelastic testing use results in fewer transfusions and a decreased mortality rate. TQIP actually has TEG cut points and, you know, and transfusion triggers, and they state that once major bleeding has been controlled, that we should use um, point of care based testing. And ABC recommends the use of early and serial TEGs. One of the latest societies to um, support viscoelastic testing is ELSO, and these are the 2021 guidelines. ELSO states that plasma-based tests such as PTT don't account for platelets and overall clot strength, but that viscoelastic testing does, but it's not routinely performed or not available at most ECMO institutions. Um, it also states that when you have a challenging case, that your conventional coag should be used to perform, you know, to evaluate anticoagulant effect, but that a whole blood test should be used to measure hemostasis. There are also a lack of studies in, in terms of blood product transfusion in ECMO patients. However, we know that studies in both trauma and CV surgery all state that TEG can help uh, improve blood transfusion. Excuse me, can help, in, yes, can help. <laughs> conserve blood product use, excuse me. Um, they also recommend the use of viscoelastic testing in the, in the administration of blood products. And they also talk about thrombosis, thank you, um, likely increase when antifibrinolytics are administered and that it should be evaluated with viscoelastic testing. It also recommends that tegarotem be used daily or PRN for bleeding or thrombotic complications. Here you see some TEG cut points out of the ELSO Red Book uh, version 2017. So as you see, it's got um, cut points for R time, MA, um, angle, and then also LY30. These are my references here. This concludes my presentation, and I'll open it up for any questions. Thank you.